Good morning, folks. We've got continued looks at weather and lithospheric activity, another dive into deep space. One of the most important tools for quake forecasting is back online, and we get confirmation about a mechanistic action in Mexico's faults. Quickly eyes top left for an aesthetic show of plasma filaments dancing over the limb, carving the corona with cavities and concentrations along the magnetic fields holding up those filaments. Let's quickly now come to spaceweathernews.com. We're staring into the northern reach of the wildly transequatorial coronal hole. There are no sunspots and no solar flares. The solar wind at Earth is seen calmer than it was yesterday, awaiting that stream from this opening. It is due to arrive tonight or tomorrow morning and could produce geomagnetic unrest. We will have eyes on the solar wind telemetry. Well, let's quickly go to the magnetic connectivity, which had stopped updating on ISWA for months. I can't tell you why I decided to look this morning, but I'm glad I did. It's back. This is the sun, earth-facing side on the left, far side of the sun on the right. The colored regions are the coronal holes. And you can see the coronal hole over on the left side as being the one facing earth right now. I'd have expected us to be completely connected magnetically to this region at that point, but indeed, the primary magnetic connections of Earth are still at the last coronal hole and wrapping all the way around to the far side. Thus far, the quake watch based on the Earth-facing coronal hole has been lackluster, but we aren't connected to the next coronal hole fully. Let's watch for that to happen over the next 36 hours or so. Meanwhile, the Kickham Jenny underwater volcano is showing signs of increased activity in the Caribbean, a fun reminder of the other concern beneath our feet. As for concerns above our heads, here are some of the photos of hail that hit Arkansas over the weekend. We are very lucky no one was killed there. Wasn't so lucky as a storm system rolled through multiple nations in Africa, killing livestock and people, and also bringing deadly lightning, including one strike during church mass that killed 16 and injured almost everyone inside. Coming back to the United States because the worst blizzard right now is yet another nor'easter. It's already snowing, but that is going to continue. And even as the system races up towards the North Atlantic, the snow bands stretch back through New York and into western Pennsylvania. It may snow for well over an entire day straight in some areas. Hopefully you all recall that after last solar cycle's polar magnetic spikes were matched with the only magnitude 8 quakes during that period, within half a week of the spikes, you'll recall that we had our first two recorded polar recovery 8-pointers on record, and during the first magnetic spike positive once again in this new cycle, we had the 8.2 in Mexico at the crest of the magnetic event. You likely need reminded that the hypothesized mechanism in our manuscript was piezoelectricity, and today we can report that the description of the fault centered in the region, which they say does extend eastward to the 8-pointer location off-screen of the graphic shown here, is putting the more populated regions near Mexico City at risk. Despite the visual focus on the more populated region, their description of the entire fault, different elevations, and large-scale bending of the rock is the precise action underground that will induce piezoelectric and perhaps even thermoelectric processes. I must declare that this energy hitting a critical point was the cause of the sublithospheric signals that combined to require our red alert to be placed over the region where the magnitude 8 event eventually occurred, right there on the pointer. Lastly, folks, we're using Hubble to zoom in on an old, nearly dead galaxy. This one is virtually no star production, and when looking at the color of the stars in the disk, it presents a sharp contrast for non-visual wavelength detectors. Up next, we'll see toggling blue and red dots. The blue dots are new stars, and the red dots are old ones. Look at the discrepancy inside versus outside these galaxies, both of them, where the relics are actually dominated by old stars, indicating the ages of the system. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We will do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.05 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.